Welcome back. Uh, it's time now to go to the paddock and see Sonny the paddock judge. And he's going to tell us all about cold weather racing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Now that winter's closing in on us, we're going to ask Roger Hammer how it is to race in the cold weather. Well, it's, it's not that bad, really, if you can keep warm. Nowadays, our suits are made, are insulated, and they're not that much heavier, and they keep the cold out. The only thing that really gets cold during this time of year is, with me is my hands. Maybe it's because I'm getting older or that, but uh, I train in the north all winter and fight the snow and that. The only thing, there are some horses that will help in the wintertime because the miles slow down a little bit, and they can go, they race better in the wintertime. Where summertime, these horses go these fast miles, and the heat gives these horses a faster mile. So to me, racing in the wintertime, it don't matter to me any. As long as the money's there, I'll race. Now we're going to talk to one of the trainers, Darren Kassar, from Australia, not familiar with the cold as we have it, but he's been here for a few years. Darren, tell us what it's like to train in the cold weather. It's cold, but, uh, you know, the horses seem to handle it okay. We just, you work them a little bit different depending on how the track is and so on. Darren, do you think the horses perform better or worse in the cold? Some horses like it better than others. Uh, the horses that bleed, it can affect... Uh, some horses can bleed a little bit more in the winter time, but it really depends on each horse. Uh, a lot of the foreign horses seem to handle it a little bit better than some of the American horses, but uh, you know each horse is different. Just depends on their own their own nature, pretty much. Thanks, Sonny, for that great report. Chilly, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it was chilling, so cool. It was very cool. <laughs> okay, let's go to Sunday's 13th here at Harris Chester. It was a condition base with a $30,000 purse on the line. Dreamproof was the even money favorite with George Napolitano Jr. Cam's Fool the 9 to do second choice with the Catman. Test Flight and Slickest Hanover were co third choices at 8 to 1, and James has the call for us. Dreamproof has come away with the lead by a length and a half from Test Flight. Zachary Fellows ducked in third, then comes Slickest Hanover. Our Connor Mack is at the outside of rivals. Slickest Hanover comes out from fourth. Cam Spool is saving ground. He's just five lengths off the lead. White Hot Cards is third over, moving into the bridge turn, and Noble's Grand Slam is last from fourth over. Just six and a half off leader Dream Proof, approaching race's midpoint. It's Dream Proof by a half length. Slickest Hanover applies pressure. They're halfway home in 55 and four. They straighten away up the back stretch. It's Dream Proof still with the neck in front from Slickest Hanover. Our Connor Mack is second over. His test flight is locked in the box. And slightly gapping the pocket spot. White Hot Cards is third over. Sacra Fellas pinned down at the inside. Cam's Fool continues to save ground. Noble's Grand Slam is behind excess cover. The field is covered by five lengths and slickest. Hanover sticks an neck in front from Dream Proof. Three quarters, 123 and two. Midway around the far turn, it's slickest Hanover. And Dream Proof responds to the challenge of slickest Hanover. These two heads apart at the top of the stretch. Test flight. Awaits the open stretch. Our Connor Mack needs room. Blind switched by Noble's Grand Slam. The grandstand side. Cam's full. There is 16th out. And it's slickest Hanover. Dream proof is all out. Cam's full flying in the center of the track. Who and said Cam's closers were dead? Was it you, Bet Girl? I don't think it was well, me. Well, they're not. They're living and they did well in that race. Entering the final turn, Cam's full was buried dead last on the rail with Manzi and figuring to go nowhere. Then he took him outside, unleashed a furious stretch drive to get up in 151 and 4, went by everybody. Noble's Grand Slam took the same route. He came from the men's room as well, and he got up for second. And Slickest Hanover finished third. Can we say it was a cat fight? You cat Manzi? You could say that. <laughs> you could, as a matter of fact. It was a great race. I just did say that. You did. Okay, let's stay with us because when we come back, we're going around the oval. we got some good races for you this week. You're going to love this. Don't go away. Rob is the rabbit's foot because everyone feels a little luckier when he's around. And that's why he's a part of your group. Everyone plays a part at Harris. Only 10 minutes south of the Philadelphia airport. It's Mac Lobel, and he's pouring it on. It's Niatros by four, and he's going away. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame, a place where heroes come to life, preserving harness racing's treasured past while promoting its exciting future. And now get ready to harness your excitement with the thrill of Harness Racing's 3D Simulator. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame now offering free admission. Bigger, better, bolder than ever. Hi everybody and welcome back. Well last week at Woodbine you saw the limb of the Governor's Cup. It promised to be a contentious race in the final. It didn't disappoint and with that Here's Bet Girl. 
<laughs> yeah, like first of all, check out the better Arizona choice, and that's Arizona dial or no dial. Also, Nebuchadnezzar and Art Colony won their eliminations last week. Mm -hmm. So, let's see the race. All right. So, it's Art Colony taking his lead to the far turn. Right there from second is Major and Art. Two likes back at the rail, third now to Amazon Art. Another two likes back at the inside, fourth is dial or no dial. Nebuchadnezzar has yet to see the rail. He's still advancing, and he will catch cover, talented cover at that. As dial or no dial is out of fourth and on the Rated first over gain here for Sears as the field moves around that far turn. Art Colony still up front. Right there, second major in Art. And they blaze past three quarters in 123 and 1. Coming into the stretch now, Art Colony still up front. Pocket pulling, here comes major in Art on the outside. Then back in third is Dial or No Dial. An explosive leg kick coming for Nebuchadnezzar off a helmet. Art Colony kicks away by two legs. Nebuchadnezzar closing up on the outside now. Nebuchadnezzar trying to run down Art Colony as they come into the final 16th. Waples working, Codron closing, Nebuchadnezzar on the outside, Art Colony at the rail, gave it up in the last stride. Nebuchadnezzar wins by a head, Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> I don't know how he wins, but he does, that was amazing. I would have totally been fired, you know, if I was the driver on that horse, because I don't know how Steve Condren kept him going, and then they win right at the final never stride. Saw the rail. Never saw the rail, that's right. And he closed like a thug. Yeah, wins in 151 and 2, that's amazing. And Art Colony was second, Major and Art was third. If you're wondering, the favorite, dial or no dial, ended up being fourth in that race. He was, so I thought he was going to be the, the choice in the race. In the $660,000 Valley Victory Final for two-year-old Colts, also contested at Woodbine. Fed Federal Flex was the favorite with Jody Jamison at even money. Encore Encore was the two-to-one second choice. Judge Joe, the public seven-to-two third choice. Here's the call of the Valley Victory Final. Federal Flex is still in front. He's got a length head start on Judge Joe, who is second. Then back in third is striking Lindsay. Late trot from Encore, Encore fourth. There's the 7 8 mile marker. Federal Flex kicks away. Two lengths the best here. Judge Joe second. Late speed from striking Lindsay and from Encore, Encore. Even triumphant caviar, but it's too late to catch Federal Flex. Go figure. The public nails it. One, two, three. Federal Flex got the money by about a length of change in 156 and 2. Encore Encore was second, and Judge Joe was third. Wow. By yourself. <laughs> By your own bad self. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to take over the next race. Three diamonds, because diamonds are a girl's best friend, you know. So you want to check out Ginger and Fred in here, who is the favorite Hawaiian drink and special sweetheart mm -hmm. are a couple others that you should keep your eye on. Three quarters of a mile, and it's put on the board by Ginger and Fred, and Tietrick over there in 124 and 3 with her, drawing up alongside on the outside now. Special sweetheart going to make a race of it. Special sweetheart running in there as she committed the stretch. Back in second now, Ginger and Fred as special sweetheart strikes the front. Special Sweetheart takes over for Jameson in deep stretch. Brushing up hard from the backfield. Check out Hawaiian Drink and Brian Sears. Hawaiian Drink on the outside. Aloha! So Hawaiian Drink earns one of those cute little umbrellas on the little toothpick. She was 10 lengths off of the field at the half, but then she's hotter than a luau. And she ends up winning um, in 153 and 2 with Brian Sears. You are so clever. Uh, so clever. His second was Special Sweetheart. And not just a pretty face was third. Anyway, we're out of time. So all we can say is Happy Halloween. Congratulations to the Philadelphia Phillies. And until next time, for. He for I'm sorry. My Bet name. Girl. Oh, okay. I'm Zero. <laughs> Have yourself a terrific week. Bye bye.